what I do is help our portfolio companies, which are software companies at the expansion stage, um, sort of you know get ready and start building relationships with potential partners, potential acquirers, capital providers. Um, and you know when I say expansion stage, for those of you who don't know OpenView that well, you know our portfolio is comprised of you know companies that have um, you know started to generate uh, revenue somewhere between you know or north of a million dollars ARR each year, or probably growing over 100% when we invest in them, and are really solving a problem. Customers are buying the product, and, and the companies are, are really scaling out. Um, you know, and, and that's sort of how we oriented, uh, you know, this deck and, and those are the types of companies I work with. You know, companies at that stage, um, you know, are, are, you know, starting to think a lot about, you know, how do I raise strategic awareness uh, with all of the large uh, ecosystem uh, software and tech companies out there, um, sort of make myself relevant, build relationships with the folks that, might want to partner with me and may want to acquire me someday and you know what are the tools for having those discussions so I spent a lot of time uh, brokering those connections and, and giving our companies uh, tools to have those conversations as well um, but uh, you know we created this deck um, you know really in response to high demand um, from the portfolio companies around you know I need help putting my presentation together to have those discussions and you know what should it look like what should I include what should I not include so um, you know why do you build a corporate development deck is, uh, is, is, is a question sort of we started getting so we put this framework together um, you know, really to help companies you know tell their story and build awareness with prospective acquirers um, as well as partners capital providers and investment banks who can help tell your story and advise you and, and help you create even better materials and things like that. So, um, you know, and I put capital providers on here thinking sort of later, later stage capital. You know, this isn't, a, this isn't a fundraising, you know, seed stage early round deck uh, for software companies. I think that is more of a product oriented story, um, more of a vision oriented story that you can do some of that in a deck like this. Uh, companies more at the expansion stage, uh, when we invest, are businesses that have scaled a bit, um, have you know, more sort of metrics around the business, um, more infrastructure built out, um, you know, are talking about those types of things in addition to uh, their product. And you know, those are the types of things that potential acquirers, strategic acquirers, uh, corp dev type partners are thinking about in addition to the product. So as you'll see, I'll walk you through, you know, um, what, what I think is a directional framework for building this type of deck to have these conversations. Um, it's certainly not a one size fits all. Uh, you know, we've drawn on our experience to just put together what the core elements and best practices should be for this type of presentation, um, but it's not going to fit for everybody. There's going to be certain sections and areas that you'll blow out or other ones that you won't include depending on the scenario, but it should be a tool for having um, at least early round discussions with folks, um, you know, maybe in a half hour, 45 minute setting uh, that you can expand on, um, you know, when the time is right and add more detail if you get further in the process with a potential acquirer or go to market a part partner. Uh, and I have sort of slanted this deck to, you know, talking to the folks that, that might be um, a strategic outcome or an acquirer for you. So that's why you'll see some of that type, type of language in here. But again, it could be spun or transformed into more of a, a, more of a partnership oriented discussion or a capital raise one as well. And it can be shortened or expanded. Um, so you, know, you think about sort of the goal of a deck like this and there's a couple elements, a couple things that are really important, but overall you're telling a story. Um, you know, you are trying to really describe the, the ugly problem that you solve. Um, or that you plan to solve. Maybe you solve some of it right now, but you have a vision and what's your progress been against that vision and where are you headed in solving that problem. Um, you know, describing how big of a market opportunity is very important, uh, why you're different, uh, what's your secret sauce, whether that's a product feature, core IP, um, you know, operational excellence, your go-to-market model, whatever it is, um, you need to pull that out in a deck like this. Uh, what's your competitive barrier that you've created? You know, why are you better than the competition? Why do you win? And frankly, why do you lose as well? And what are the situations where you know you shouldn't be playing? Um, you know, sort of what what's your market? Why do you win in that market? Um, definitely at this stage, um, if you're talking to potential strategic partners, you know, your team is important. I think um, you know. If, 
you know, co companies in Oracle and IBM and Adobe, you know, large software players out there are looking to bring on talent. So I think showcasing your team and who's running the business, especially at the executive level, is important. Um, explain your model in simple terms. Your business model, again, uh, this ranges from, you know, the go-to-market uh, function or the R&D uh, function, general infrastructure. Uh, just painting a picture of the type of business you've built, not just the, the product, not just your secret sauce and that sort of thing, but, uh, you know, what the engine is and how you operate. And then for more detailed, you know, in-depth, maybe under NDA discussions, you're talking about, uh, you know, your financials and KPIs and that sort of thing. And definitely, you know, for very tailored discussions, you know, one-on-one -on -one discussions, you know, what specific need do you fill for the other party? Is it a product gap? Um, is it a geography? Is it a channel? Um, you need to pull that out as you get sort of further down the road in a discussion uh, with a potential strategic partner. So those are the things I think about in terms of making it a great story. And, and by the way, I'm sure we're going to get this question, but um, you know, we will send this recording out. Uh, we'll follow that up uh, with um, the deck itself once we make a, a couple of just uh, sort of uh, public uh, or changes to it for public use. But so I'll send this out after. But I wanted to obviously talk through it on the webinar first because um, I know I'll, I'll be getting that question. Um, so sort of other best practices and tips for building a deck like this. Um, expect to iterate a ton. Um, you know. You know, I'll show you more of a sort of high-level timeline that I think about in building a deck, but um, you're going to probably put together 10 to 20, maybe even more versions of this before it starts to get really crisp. So use your team, um, you know, whether you're a CEO or you're a head of corporate development or business development or you're a CFO, whoever is giving this presentation and creating it, um, it could be any or all of the above. You need a lot of cycles and you need, you know, support and perspective and practice uh, with you know, your team, your board, and your advisors. Um, that may be investment banks who do or don't work for you, but bouncing the story off a lot of people is important. Uh, concision is important. I try to keep it to 10 to 15 slides until you really need to expand it for more in-depth discussions. Uh, you know, avoid very technical product-heavy slides. You can always include an appendix uh, with, with super technical product and technology pieces. Um, you know, little things like including your company logo throughout the deck is important. Um, you know, be descriptive in your slide titles. Um, you know, the, our, our head of marketing, Kyle Lacey, that's something that, that he's talked about here at OpenView, and it's something that I've taken to. But um, try, to, try to tell a story with your slide title as much as you can. Uh, you'll see this throughout the examples that I'm going to share in a minute. Uh, and be, be consistent in your design, um, whether that's, you know, your corporate design or one that you create. Uh, do it on every slide. Um, and certainly, you know, um, produce ch charts and PowerPoints. Again, these are little things, but you want to make it look clean. Uh, don't drop in pictures of charts and things like that. Don't use pixelated images and send PDFs uh, to preserve formatting. So when you think about, you know, the process of building one of these, that's as important as the actual content itself. Um, I tell the CEOs in our portfolio, you know, you need to think about this as probably a several week process. Could you put together a very good deck in a week? Probably, uh, but it takes a lot of time. Um, the key here is I've laid out, you know, a very high-level example of a six-week process for building a deck like this. Um, you know, get started. That's the important thing. Create an outline, then get a first draft done, even if it's bad. Um, you send that to your board, send that to your team, um, bounce it off your advisors, but you need to get something in front of people so that they can react. That's the only way iterations start to happen. Um, you can't create a great deck on the first draft. It's impossible. You have to get something together, um, you know, and then start iterating with people. Again, whoever that may be around you, practice it, iterate it, gather third-party feedback from investment banks. You can definitely leverage banks if you know them. They won't charge you for it, but they're very good at telling stories like this, and they can help you with this uh, even more if you did hire one of them. But it's a good resource, a good free resource, and good good perspective on these types of materials. And you know, another thing I say is don't bother sort of formatting and polishing like crazy until you're many cycles into this and the content is right. It's just a waste of time to do that. Make sure you're getting the message right. Um, so again, I've usually seen this take you know a month, month and a half. You can do it in much less time, but everyone has a lot on their plates when they're running companies. Um, but this stuff's important. So a few hours, um, you know, 
an hour or two a day, um, probably for several weeks. You know, often it often takes a long to get this right. So have that expectation, and that's that's you know that that'll help you get there. Um, so in terms of the actual components of a deck like this, you know, these are sort of the, the core areas that you'll see in most quote unquote corp dev or BD decks uh, used for this purpose. You know, you might use all of these. You might only use a few of them. Um, you might blow some of these areas out uh, in, and expand on them depending on what your story is. But tech, you know, usually you've got sort of a problem statement. Uh, I call it a problem and vision statement up front. Usually you'll, you'll see it called a problem and solution statement. I call it problem and vision because you, know, you want to talk about what the problem is and it, not just how you're solving it, but how you may be solving it going forward. Um, so that sort of gets into your longer term vision, which I'll talk about more in a second, but at least a problem statement up front, who's feeling the pain and how you're solving it or how do you plan to solve it. Um, a business highlights section, just bam, right up front, one to two pages. You know, what's sort of the, um, what's the high level summary of my business? What are the things we're doing right? You can, you can expand on all that in the rest of the deck. Uh, market validation, just talking about how big your market is and where you sit. The competition is important. Uh, product and technology, as I mentioned, um, you can get into that. If it's not overly technical, you can always have an appendix section. Um, you need to talk about how you acquire customers, um, what your current base of customers and partners looks like, and then expansion opportunities, you know, how if you were to remain independent, what, your, what are your plans for growth? Um, you know, and if, you know, sort of, was it, is it channel oriented, is it product oriented, is it geography? Um, you can include a product roadmap in this section, but talking about how you're thinking about growing the company from this point forward. Again, the team is important as well. You could slide this section up front, many people do. Uh, and then financials and KPIs, you know, at some point folks around these types of conversations are going to want to know, you know, how is the business performing? Um, why has it done this in the last year? Why has it done that? Uh, just sort of talking about the efficacy of, of the product and how you're selling it and how you're performing. A lot of times you'll do this under NDA, but if you can share high-level KPIs without NDA, if you're comfortable doing that as well, but at some point it becomes, it becomes part of the story. So, and I mentioned, you know, that last section, you may want to, ex you will expand in some areas depending on what your story's kernel is. Um, you know, I laid out some examples here of how you might think about expanding. Again, this is not a one-size-fits-all deck. Um, you might spend half of, of the deck on one of these sections or two of these sections. Um, you know, for example, if sort of a, a you know, pr competitive product gap um, is, is, is sort of your advantage, you know, talk about what incumbent is doing wrong. You might expand on the competition section and your product and technology session, section. If it's a huge market opportunity, just sheer size, or you've got a niche in a space where no one else plays, you've got to, you may need to use a couple slides around market validation. Um, you know, if, 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 it, if it's IP, again, you'd probably be talking more about the product and technology. Um, so just some examples of, you know, you, you need to think about where do I expand, what sections do I leverage the most, do I need to cut out other sections to make this shorter. Um, you know, it really depends on your specific story, but I try to just give a few examples here of, uh, of how you might connect a section with what your particular problem is. So as I mentioned, you know, your story will dictate content and flow, but I put together sort of a section by section, um, you know, guideline uh, and, and high level simple examples of how these pages and sections have looked in some of the best decks that I've seen and decks that, uh, you know, we've worked on. Um, so I mentioned the problem and vision section earlier, you know, the key here with this section is to set up the rest of the presentation by really answering the question, you know, what is the problem and for whom and how do I solve it or will I solve it? So a very simple version of this section might just be simply, you know, one page, a tagline or elevator pitch just describing the problem that you solve in one slide. Um, here's an example, you know, Acme Software is the example I use, the, the pretend company in this deck, but, um, you know, an automated marketing platform that drives new and repeat, you know, customers for the business, just a simple tagline. If you want to actually talk about a problem and a solution statement, um, you know, here's another example, um, just laying out what the issue is and how we solve it. Um, so m most companies lay out something simple like that. There is an expanded version of this as well um, where your um, you know, problem statement becomes part of, you know, sort of leads into your vision. Um, and I think this is true for companies that are either earlier stage where they don't 
quite have maybe the KPIs or the traction of a later stage company or maybe they're pivoting um, and they're companies that need to communicate sort of more of a forward-looking thesis in order to maximize the value prop. Um, so, you know, there is, there is a world where you sort of make this a little bit more like an earlier stage deck and you expand this into, okay, here's the problem, I'm solving some of it, but here is my vision. Um, and, you know, this, this, this turns into sort of, I, you know, have a section, just a very high-level example here of if you, if you really extend this, um, it can be multi-slide, you know, two, three, four, up to eight slides possibly. Just, just the example I made here, defining the problem carefully, explaining your vision, um, progress you made against that vision, and sort of how you're going to innovate. Um, I'll come back to this at the end, but the point, is, the point being is that you may need sort of other sections of the deck, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, to really hammer home you know, yes, um, it, there is this issue, uh, but the value of my business is sort of more forward-looking. Um, so I'll, I'll touch on that at the end after we talk about these next sections, but, but it's, an, it's an important point to, to think about. The business highlight section, you know, almost every deck is going to have something like this, talking about, you know, quick hits, what does my business look like? And strategic partners, strategic acquirers are generally going to want to know up front, you know, what the business is, what it's doing. Again, this is different than sort of an early seed round founder type of uh, deck where you're talking, I think, more about the product and the story up front. Um, this is, you know, this is for slightly later stage, more scale companies, I think, where you've got you know, a business built and you need to sort of make your quick hits for, for Corp Dev and BD Tams out there. So give that snapshot, you know, describe the unique value proposition in one or two sentences, highlight sort of relevant metrics and facts of the business. Um, and, you know, I say rather than sort of list them out, try to group them with bold summary statements and describe the most important attributes of the business. Um, so some of the data points that you would include in a, in a section or a page like this, number of employees, your founding year, you know, who your marquee investors are, sort of what your growth has been if it's very good, um, maybe some high-level KPIs around revenue and customers, marquee customer logos, uh, your team, your experience, uh, even testimonials from customers or accolades and press that you've, you know, received from third parties as well. Really trying to, you know, what are the shiny objects throughout your business? Um, so here's an example that we put together, again, for Acme Systems Company. Uh, I made this a two-slide section, um, as you can see here, but very simple, um, you know, sort of hitting on, you know, e ease of use and state-of-the-art product with some call-outs from Gartner, um, you know, a couple high-level KPIs around revenue um, and things like that, and, you know, you know, some, some, some tidbits about sort of, you know, where you are located and where, when you've been founded and sort of and who you're backed by, that sort of thing. These are all meant to show that this is a real company and be very simple. Um, you know, I often make this one page. Um, our marketing department likes to be more simple on slides and not cram things in, so we made it two pages, so that's up to you. But um, these are the types of things that you might show and sort of a quick highlight section up front so someone can really quickly, you know, read the deck on their own and it, it, so it can stand on their own. Um, so that's an important section, and you'll, you'll expand on those areas in the back of the deck. Uh, market validation, super important. Again, uh, no surprise here, but you're sort of defining the market, where do you operate, and who is the customer, uh, and then you're, you're sizing the market as well, um, whether that's bottom-up, um, data-based, or sort of top-down, um, you know, and you might be using third-party industry analysts, Gartner, Farsh, or things like that, where you can use third-party data uh, to do this. Um, you know, it, it's obviously better to have that and to cite that, uh, but if you're doing the calculations, as long as you're sort of showing your logic, um, th that's helpful too. Um, you want to show things like, you know, how, you know, the size of the market, but, you know, what's the current penetration, who's already there, what's the gap between the addressable market and sort of the served market uh, where folks are already playing in. Um, you know, definitely talk about your share if, if, if you can figure that out, and always use graphs and charts more than heavy text in a section like this. Um, so, so, so a quick example here, this is sort of a bottom-up, very simple market sizing, but not tons and tons of math, but sort of shows the logic. Uh, if you were trying to size, you know, uh, your market, companies in the U.S. with 500-plus employees, there's 18,000 of them, and we think maybe some percentage, 40 percentage, let's say in Acme's case, uh, can use the product. 
you know, 15K a company is what we average in deal size, so we get through $1.1 billion addressable market. Um, you know, again, simple, straightforward, someone can follow it. Obviously, the more logical, the better. Um, just another quick example here, different math, but, um, you know, and then from a top-down standpoint, this example is about, um, you know, something where you can really, you know, maybe you're citing sort of third-party data to talk about the total addressable market versus the served market over time. Uh, so over a three-year period, you, you know, or some period of time, you might show how the market's grown, um, how three or four or however many players are, are in that market and what all the white space is. So um, there's a lot of ways to talk about market sizing. I'm by no means covering them here. I'm just trying to give some quick examples of how the slides might look, how you might think about the math, that sort of thing. Competition, why we win and lose. Um, Definitely important as well, um, you know, and not just why we win, but why we lose because, you know, not everyone wins every time, and I think that you don't want to be sort of disparaging towards your competition. Uh, if you can be honest about the situations where you're not supposed to be playing in, uh, maybe because it's not a product market fit and, uh, you know, your sort of adjacent competitors are, are in a better spot, I think that's fine if you don't go overboard. Um, but you know, most decks are going to have this, um, most strategic partners, corp dev groups, BD groups are going to want to know who else is in this space, why are you different. So, you know, give a top-down view of the landscape and any subcategories that there are, uh, whether across the subcategories, the difference is product features or types of customer served or the channel. Um, definitely highlight where you exist in the competitive landscape. Uh, why are you unique, obviously, and what are your strengths? And as I mentioned, don't, don't dismiss the competition. Again, there's a lot of ways to lay out something like this. You know, I put together here your classic XY uh, axis view of the competition. You, know, you might show something like, um, you know, size of customer served on one axis and, you know, product type or channel type or geography or something like that on another axis. But anyway, to simply, you know, uh, sort of delineate, um, you know, where you sit versus the competition, why you're better, why you're more and why you're higher um, is, is important to get into. And then, you know, you also have sort of your classic side-by-side. -side. I'm having this fun with logos here. I didn't want to use actual software companies, but, um, you know, uh, superheroes are, are, I guess, fun for everyone. But, um, you know, showing sort of specific features, functionalities, you can, you can go beyond this again, um, but, you know, just some, just some simple ways to show, you know, pie charts, you know, and, and be honest, if, if other competitors are, are better in certain areas, that's fine, but you want to paint a picture of exactly what you're doing well versus, versus everybody else, so. Uh, product and technology, um, you know, I'm not a technical person, so it's not my forte, but this has to be talked about in most every, every presentation. Um, the things I will say, you know, obviously explain what your product is, what it does. Um, I'd say, you know, include a tagline in there, try to sum it very quickly, what problem you're solving. Maybe this comes back to your, your problem and solution statement from up front. Um, you know, highlight what your special sauce is and, and whether that's back-end uh, IP or, or some specific feature that you have that other folks don't. Um, as always, uh, diagrams and visuals are better than tons of text. And if you need to supplement this with an appendix section and have a more technical, technically oriented discussion at some point, that's fine too. I just put in a couple examples here. Um, you know, this is not fancy stuff. And most of you know your product. You all know your product better than, better than I will, better than anyone else, else will. So you probably need the least help around describing what your product is and uh, what it does. So I won't spend a ton of time there. Um, customer acquisition model, again, another important section. You know, how do you get customers? How do you, how do you generate revenue? Um, so try to map this process out from lead creation to deal close if you can, exactly what the engine is. Um, if you have a direct sales organization, if you have a product-led uh, strategy, if you have a partner strategy, talk about whatever it is, um, or if you use a combination, talk about all of it, what the process is. Um, if, you, if the pricing model in some way is advantageous, you can talk about that too. And you start to get into some of your KPIs here. Um, you know, that might matter in terms of showing the, the effectiveness of the, of the sales model. So, um, and, and why is your go-to-market model a strength? I mean, this might be a section that you expand on if, if you're simply doing it better than others. Um, you know, a lot of slides take on some sort of format like this. Um, showing, you know, different, different channel breakout or international versus U.S. breakout, that sort of thing with a couple, 
you know, different, um, different metrics included. You might show marquee channel partner logos, that sort of thing, um, or a process-oriented slide, exactly how you go about um, generating leads, um, how those become real, uh, you know, sales qualified leads and opportunities, how you close those opportunities, and along the way, who the players are in your organization. So, um, you know, definitely important part of the deck, and, and even managing the customers around customer success and, and, and retaining as well. So, um, you know, uh, make make this part of the almost every deck because because I've sat on on the side of, of the corp development person asking the questions about companies that I was thinking of buying, and I always wanted to know exactly how many reps were carrying suitcases and traveling, or how many people were calling from inside sales. You know, how 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 was your how did your model built, and 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 how do you make money really? So it's an important part of the process. Customers and partners. This is more about who your current base is. Um, you know, validate sort of your traction. Um, you know, what's what's the concentration? Who are the marquee logos? That sort of thing. How many customers? Um, describe the typical buyer if you can, and um, you know, use use graphs and, and visuals, things like that, to really lay this stuff out. Um, you know, break it out. However, is interesting to to the audience, and uh, you know, things like recent wins and large deals. Uh, things like that are important, and if you have good quotes and testimonials, you can do that here, or you can have a separate section in the appendix around case studies as well. Uh, but you have to give the audience sort of just a, a, a glance at at, uh, as, at who's buying your product as of today. So you know, a slide might look something like this, where you've got a breakout of you know again U.S. international or direct versus indirect or different industry verticals that are represented. You might also do customer concentration as well if you want to show a lack of customer concentration and how customer counts grown over time. And then again, marquee logos is always nice to see and some sort of description of you know typically who you serve, what end of the market or what portion of the market that you play in. Uh, is super important. Um, expansion opportunities. So, you know, I think of this as a section. You know, where we, where you know, as of today, where where we want to invest more dollars or we see the opportunities. It, it's sort of irrespective of uh, who the audience might be. I think it's you're thinking about growth. This this is why you might want to acquire us or partner with us. These are the things that we can do on our own. I think the things that we could do with you, Mr. or Mrs. Potential Strategic Acquirer, is slightly a different discussion, uh, which is probably an addendum to this deck, but you need to talk about what you're excited about. Um, it could be new channels, geography, it could be technology partnerships, things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of places you can go. It could be acquiring, it could be, you know, certain investments you're making, but, you know, I usually talk about hitting this in the end of the deck if you sort of haven't highlighted it enough already, and you might lay it out something like this, you know, very simple. Here are the areas we're excited about. Um, you know, we're moving further into the enterprise from SMB. We're expanding into uh, Europe and Asia ge geographically. You know, maybe it's a product build out. We're adding features that other folks don't have. Um, you know, new channels could be part of it. Uh, maybe it's M and A. So there's there's no shortage of stuff here, but I think it's important to hit this if you sort of you know haven't talked about it as part of your vision yet. And then team is very important as well. I mentioned this, but you know, not just sort of who folks are, but you know. Uh, titles, bios, you know, where they've worked. Um, this is a big element and, you know, it, it's a big part of the value of a company. Um, you know, no prior companies worked for, maybe show logos of sort of marquee companies that your team has worked for in the past and, and things they've done and, you know, focus on track record. And uh, I always like to say use headshots because it sort of humanizes the story and the deck. Um, you know, I'm playing around here with some 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 uh, some dead presidents, but um, you know I've seen some pages laid out nicely like this, where you're talking about not only what the title is, but sort of the things they do today and the things they've done in the past. Um, maybe talking about some of the big companies that folks have worked for. Uh, you're just trying to show what the track record is and, and get folks excited about who they might be bringing on board. Um, I made it a two slide section, but often it's just a one slide section. So. Um, Financials and KPIs is usually sort of towards the back. Again, this might be an under NDA part of the deck, depending on, on what the nature is. But at some point, you want to be discussing how the business is performing. Um, you know, at a minimum, it should include you know KPIs around revenue, margins, and growth. I think you might you know in a deeper dive include you know a projection, a P&L projection. Uh, but talk about you know major growth drivers behind anything that you're showing, and you know sort of be ready to have commentary to explain uh, why the company is performing the way it is. Um, and I just laid out some simple examples here. Um, you know, combination of, of 
of, of P&L, KPIs, and, and some commentary around revenue margins. So um, again, th this, is, this tends to be an optional section, but it, eventually it comes up. So as far as appendix, I mean, there are a bunch of other things you can slot into this deck. Um, so certainly product roadmap, uh, screenshots are asked for a lot of the time. I often see company timelines, you know, sort of how we came to be. These are the, these are the big milestones, you know, a, a detailed view of the headcount in the org, and then case studies um, can be pretty powerful as well. And I included some examples I'll run through here. Just, you know, here's a quick shot at a, at a roadmap that you might include. Um, you know, product screenshots, um, folks ask for those a lot as well. You might have a company history, like I mentioned, you know, you know, when did we raise rounds, operational milestones, product milestones, uh, when were we founded, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, you can just shoot to this in the beginning of the deck if, if someone sort of asks you, you know, the history of the company. And then um, you, you'll get a question usually around how many people work for the company and what departments and, you know, especially if, if it's an M&A type of discussion, you know, how does, how does that fit with us? Um, you know, where is where is sort of where are you spending money? Where are you hiring people? That sort of thing. So uh, you might want to have that that view as well. Um, and then customer case studies are are important. You might include this many times. This is part of the 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 the, the core section of the deck. But um, you know, quotes, things like that. Um, you know, a quick snapshot of a problem you solved, uh, specifically how you did it. It's sort of uh, it, it, it's not so abstract as other parts of the deck, so um, I just should a quick side by side here of two possible uh, ways to do it. So that's the end of our deck. I tried to get through 60 slides in a reasonable amount of time. Um, you know, one thing I do just want to go back to quickly that I touched on um, is in the problem and you know sort of the problem and solution statement up front. I talk a bit about expanding that into your vision. Um, you know. What I'm talking about is, is companies that a little bit earlier stage or maybe that are pivoting um, where you don't have sort of as, as many concrete KPIs and, and, and infrastructure type of things to talk about. If it's really, um, if it's really a forward-looking story, I think there are scenarios where you, you spend many slides talking about the problem. If, you, if it's a technical problem and a technical user and it's a hard problem to understand, uh, you may really have to spend more of the deck talking about, you know, the specific problems people are having, the questions they're asking, um, you know, testimonials, data stories that sort of um, articulate what those issues are and then move into, you know, paint a picture of, you know, how it would look like if someone solved these problems, um, ways in which people are not solving these problems, what is the market opportunity for solving the problem, and then the progress, progress you've made against that, uh, your product today, what you can do, what you've done so far, uh, sort of, and why your business is, is, is moving in the right direction because of it operationally. And then you get into sort of these are the things that we're building, we're adding, what we might need capital for or, or we want to be acquired for and do as part of a large organization. This is the roadmap. So, um, you know, it's, it's, again, it could be called a problem and solution section. I call it a problem and vision section because you're spending maybe more time telling the forward-looking story and incorporating other parts of the deck. Um, but. Uh, mo you know, most of these decks really have a quick, you know, one, one or two slides talking about the problem, um, you know, the simple version here on the left, um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's certainly different ways to slice it. So that's, that's the deck. As, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I've, I've got some questions here about whether we will, um, you'll be sending it out. We're going to send this recording out, I think, in the next 24 hours to everyone on this who's, who's uh, on the call today. And then I'll send the deck itself out. I just need to make some changes to it, put some disclosures and things like that on it. We'll send that out probably in the next week or two uh, to the same group. I think we'll also publish that on our website as well. So, and I'm just going to ask Casey to help me to see if I have any uh, questions here. Uh, most of the questions look like around can we send this deck out. So I'll do that. As I mentioned, I answered that. Um, and I think that does it. So thanks for joining, everyone. Yeah, um, everyone, thank you for joining. Like I mentioned, if questions come up after you receive the recording or the deck, please feel free to uh, email me. You have my email from our correspondence. And um, in the meantime, John, thank you so much for having us again. I apologize to everybody for the technical difficulties at the beginning, though I'm sure a lot of you have put on webinars, and sometimes it would not be a webinar without one of those. So that all being said, thank you so much for attending, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.